Fast API versus Django, the biggest competition announcement that is entirely free and not on pay-per-view. In this video, we have three main achievements we are trying to complete. One, what is Fast API and what is Django? Two, what is the performance and ease of learning for both of them? Three is the community that surrounds Fast API and how is the community that surrounds Django? Which one's more vibrant? Which one's more active? Which one do you want to be a part of? So go ahead and grab your favorite drink. I got mine right here. Today I am using, oops, I am using my number one dad drink. I, I didn't, this is not self-proclaimed. This is what the mug told me I am today. <laughs> With that, I will see you in the video. Let's dive in. All right, so here is Fast API and Django. Fast API is known for the API endpoints and being able to create backend applications for SPA applications, which is like React, Angular, Vue, Next.js, and a whole bunch of others. It's really good at real-time applications using web socketing and some other functionality. It's a top choice for creating microservices using Python. It is used in a lot of data-driven apps such as AI applications, or even if you're gonna be like implementing ChatGPT or Gemini or something inside your application, Fast API is a great choice for those type of applications. And it's really popular between the Internet of Things and edge computing. Now, Django, on the other hand, is really focused on just web applications. So it's able to create beautiful full stack web applications without having to use any other dependencies. So like in Fast API, you need to use Jinja or some type of templating dependency. In Django, it has all of that embedded from the beginning. It creates monolithic applications easily. And monolithic MVC applications mean the model view and controller are all really easy for you to implement and touch on different parts of the application. It is known as a framework that has the batteries included, which means it has authentication, it has an admin channel, it is able to do a lot of things that you have to create if you are using Fast API by default. However, Django does have a REST framework that is similar to Fast API. However, I do think the Fast API has an advantage over Django's REST framework, and I'll kind of get into this as we go into this video some more. So let's check out Fast API for the performance because performance is a big thing, but it's not necessarily the biggest thing at all times. Um, so what we're gonna see with Fast API is that it's known for high performance. Now it's known for high performance because of the async capabilities, which makes it handle large number of requests efficiently. This makes it straightforward for developers to learn if they're already familiar with Python. There's not as much to learn when using Fast API as there is in like a framework like Django. Now it's also built on top of ASGI, which is the asynchronous server gateway interface. And it's a very new framework in terms of computer science and software engineering. It was released in 2018. And also it is typically used as the backend for web API endpoints. You will often see um, Fast API using like Jinja sometimes on the front end, but most of the time it is a SPA application like React and it's integrated in communicating and getting the data from Fast API using API endpoints. Django, on the other hand, is known for doing many things. Traditionally, Django is a synchronous solution, but recently has adopted asynchronous views. So the views are able to be created asynchronously in the background. Now, overall, Django is harder to learn, but can be built for full solutions. So you'll see a lot of startups only use Django to build their entire startup application. Now, instead of ASGI like Fast API, it is built on top of WSGI, which is the web server gateway interface. And it was created in 2005, 13 years before Fast API. Now let's talk about performance a little bit more. So Fast API is known for its performance overall. Thanks to its async capabilities and being built on top of Starlight and Pydantic, it can handle a large number of requests efficiently. Django, while robust, 
may not match Fast API's performance overall, especially under high load conditions. Django offers solid performance for most applications. Now, Fast API does kind of kick Django's butt when it talks about the traditional synchronous views of a full stack framework like Django. Fast API is significantly quicker. And I did some testing. So if we look at the testing, we can see that the request handling time is significantly longer in Django than Fast API. And we can see the throughput time is significantly faster in Fast API than Django. So if we take a look here, we can see that Django is hitting about 200 milliseconds for request handling time for the same exact thing. While Fast API, on the other hand, is hitting 100 milliseconds. This is twice the speed when it comes to hitting the exact same endpoint. Now, Fast API and Django for the throughput, the throughput is not twice as fast, but there is a 40% decrease when using um, Django over Fast API. Now, again, this was tested by doing a load balancing of the exact same endpoint for Fast API versus Django. And Django has to do a little bit more robust things because it's a bigger framework and it's harder just to hit the endpoint, get the data, and return it. All right, so now let's go ahead and check out the ease of use and learning curve. Fast API is straightforward for developers familiar with modern Python features like type hints and asynchronous programming. It's relatively easy to pick up and start using. Django, on the other hand, comes with a steeper learning curve, but again, offers a comprehensive suite of tools and features right out of the box. Overall, depending on what you need, if you want a bunch of features right out of the box, well, this can be a huge advantage if you need to get a project up and running quickly. And I always used Django until I started using Spa Framework. So when I started programming myself, I used Django. I used Django literally all the time. Like my first three personal projects that I built by myself, I was using Django to build. And that's because I didn't know really how to do security. I didn't really know how to do authentication. And what I wanted at the end of the day was Python, and I wanted to use a framework that was able to get me to the destination I was trying to get to. Nowadays, because I'm familiar with React, I'm familiar with Angular, Vue, um, Next.js, all these different kind of front-end frameworks, I use Fast API, and that's because I use SPA applications that give me a little bit more control over the front-end. And then I set up JWTs, JSON Web Tokens, for authentication and authorization for the Fast API. And I can rapidly create the backend. And when you can rapidly create the backend, that's less code you have to type. That's less things you have to handle. And you can do this very quickly in Fast API, especially once you know how to do these kind of things. Now let's go ahead and look at the community and support. Django has been around since 2005. This just overall means there is a huge, 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 huge community supporting Django. It also means there's an extensive amount of documentation, numerous tutorials, and a wealth of third-party packages and dependencies and everything out there that you can embed and use within your Django application. Now, on the flip side, FastAPI was released in 2018, but it has a rapid growing community, which is vibrant and supportive. So unlike Django, which was created in 2005, FastAPI was created in 2018. So there is going to be a large number of users that are still using Django over FastAPI. And that's just because a lot of software and legacy applications are using Django. There's four versions of Django right now active and available for people to use. So if we go ahead and just look at the overall growth, we can see that in 2018, Fast API was created and it has just about zero users when Django was already sitting at 100,000. And this data came from um, GitHub and a couple like, you know, blogs that I dove into. I don't know if this is 100% accurate, but it felt accurate enough to share with all of you. So we can see that it's at zero and 100,000. In 2019 and 2020, Fast API started picking up steam a little bit, but it really shot ahead in 2021 when it crossed over 20,000 users and it really started picking up momentum. And 2021 to 2022 was huge, and 2022 to 2023 was huge. And 
this is still a year late and I know so far in 2024, this has been going like crazy. Django, on the other hand, started at 100,000 and is slowly creeping up in users as well, just not nearly at the rapid growth Fast API is happening. This distance between Django and Fast API is getting so much closer. And I'm excited to see, like, in two or three years from now, who's actually going to be winning? Is Django going to be still ahead of Fast API or are they going to be even? Is Fast API going to be right behind it? There's so many different, like, ways that this can um, happen. Well, I guess it's only three, right? It's either ahead, <laughs> the same or behind. But it's so cool to see Fast API really picking up momentum. So what we can see is that the gap is closing between them. GitHub's total stars, Django has 77.3 thousand stars on GitHub if you wanted to go check out the repository. And FastAPI has 71.9 thousand stars. And I remember when FastAPI had 50,000 stars and it felt like it was not very long ago. It is rapidly, rapidly increasing and happening at such a fast speed. That's awesome for everybody involved. All right. Hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in the next. Bye.